In this lesson we're going to be continuing with the topic that we started in the previous lesson which was the idea of solving quadratic equations. The difference is we're going to be looking at how do we solve quadratic equations that are dealing with a, a different way of looking at a situation. And to illustrate that I've actually started with an example from that previous lesson. So this was the last example I did in the previous lesson and I'm not going to solve this one I'm just going to discuss how it's the the same situation but we can look at it a different way. In the previous lesson what we did is we focused on the fact that the first equation was the equation of a parabola but we didn't discuss the second equation in terms of it being a straight line which it is which I've drawn here we talked about it just as saying well let's look at this overall parabola and then find out where this overall parabola has a height of negative 8. But that is exactly the same as treating these as two separate graphical um, equations or two different graphs of these equations and asking where do these graphs actually cross each other or where do they intersect each other. And it turns out that these points of intersection, of course, they're going to occur at the exact same x values that we solved for in the previous lesson. But because they're points of intersection, in this lesson I'm going to be focusing more on the idea of points of intersection, so I may also be looking for y values. And, not surprisingly, the y values in each of these cases match the y value that was specified here. So the actual algebraic procedure is going to be the same. It's just conceptually we're just looking at it from a different direction. I could change this situation. Now I've started with the same parabola, but now I'm looking at the x-coordinate. So here is the point of intersection. My solution, which of course is a point of intersection which has an x and a y-coordinate, but notice that the now the x-coordinate matches, in this case, this is the equation of a vertical line, x equals a value, and so those match up, but the process would be the same. It would look a little different than the previous solution, but the steps that we take there are fundamentally the same. And finally, I have my parabola once again. But this time, I've actually put in a diagonal line that has both a slope and a y-intercept. So this is in the form y equals mx plus b. It's just the equation of a straight line. So I've got the equation of a parabola, the equation of a straight line, and now I ask myself, well, where do these things cross each other, or where do they intersect? And graphically, I can see that, and our goal for today's lesson is to explore this same idea algebraically. In general, there are three options I have for how this could work out. One of them is that my parabola and my straight line never touch, and that would mean no solution. So they don't touch each other, they don't cross each other, that's no solution. In the case of one solution, that occurs at what's known as a tangent point, and that means that the line itself is what's known as a tangent line. A tangent line comes up and touches the other shape, in this case it's a parabola, but it doesn't cross through it. It just touches it at one point, just, just at the edge. If we moved this straight line further up, we would end up in this situation, where the line is not a tangent line, it actually slices through the other shape, and that is known as a secant line. So a tangent line just touches it at one location. A secant line cuts through the shape and can touch it at multiple locations. In the case of, of a parabola, the only way that you can have these systems interact with each other is with no solution, one solution, or two solutions. If that idea of zero, one, or two solutions seems familiar to you, it's because it's something we've talked about already. We talked about it in the previous lesson, and it has to do uh, with basically any quadratic equation. 
is going to have zero, one, or two solutions. So keep that in mind as we move forward through this lesson. All right, now, just a reminder, when we solve an equation, what we're being asked to do is to find a value or values for any variables in the equation that make the equation true. So if I just start with a single equation, here I've written out a quadratic equation. I've used capitals here because I'm also going to be using uh, lowercase letters a little bit later on. And actually there's a change I'm making here. I'm going to refer to this as k instead of a b. So this is still the equation of a straight line, but I'm writing it in the form y equals mx plus k. You'll see the reason for that in a moment. So in either of these equations, when I talk about solving the equations, I'm trying to find values, usually for x and y, that will make the left side equal to the right side. If I'm trying to look at the entire system of equations, which would be both of them together, then I'm still looking for x, y values, but I'm looking for these points, x and y, that satisfy the first equation and satisfy the second equation. Because if there's a point that's on this parabola, and a point and the same point is on this straight line well that point must be where these two curves or these two graphical representations cross each other and that's known as the intersection okay so let's go ahead and start off with you can see I've actually I remembered to modify that B into a K here so we start off with the equation of a parabola the equation of a straight line and we're going to make use of the fact that for these things to intersect their y values must intersect and because these equations are written in terms of y y equals and y equals the easiest thing I can do is start off with the fact that I want this y coordinate to match this y coordinate but I just start there from there I actually start to make use of all of the rest of the equations in terms of x. So here is the parabola defined in terms of x. Here is the straight line defined in terms of x. And if I rearrange these terms, in this case I've taken these and I've brought them over to the left side, I end up with a new quadratic equation. It's still going to have an x squared, an x, and a constant. And so I end up with a new quadratic equation and I can try to solve that quadratic equation. I might solve that quadratic equation by factoring. I might solve that by completing the square. Or I might solve that using the general quadratic formula. And it's going to depend on the situation. So once I solve that, I'm going to get some x values, if it has any solutions at all and I can sub those x values into either of these two original equations to find the y values and now I have the points of intersection. So let's go ahead and do an example that illustrates this. Find the points of intersection between this parabola and this straight line. Now you might want to just do a very quick sketch of this just to make sure you've got your head wrapped around the situation. You don't need to do this but it's usually a good idea. So let's see this parabola has a vertex, it's in vertex form, it has a vertex at 1 comma 2 and this has a slope of 1 and it has a y-intercept of 2. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put, well, there's a y-intercept of 2, let's say. And I'm going to put this line with a slope of 1. It's going to look something like that. And then, and I'm not going to be too precise here. I can't. I'm doing this with no real scale. Over here, I have a vertex at 1, 2. So it's going to, the vertex is going to be there. And this parabola opens up. So it's going to go something like that. So I'm going to have, it looks like a point of intersection here and a point of intersection here. So I'm going to keep that in mind. I've just, I've just done this to give me a rough idea. 
and when I get my answer I just want to make sure my answer is not completely uh, outlandish or ridiculous compared to this rough idea that I've put together here. So the first thing I'm going to do is say that we want those y coordinates to match up. So y equals y which is kind of a ridiculous thing to say so you might say it this way we want y1 to be equal to y2. So how does that look? Well that's going to mean that the parabola, the y coordinate of the parabola, has to be equal to the y coordinate of the straight line. But the y coordinate of the parabola is defined in terms of x. 2 times x minus 1 all squared plus 2. And the y coordinate of the straight line is x plus 2. Now I need to do the algebra. In order to do anything really meaningful here, I'm going to need to expand out this left side. So that becomes 2 and then x minus 1 all squared is the same as x squared minus 2x plus 1. I have a plus 2 left over. x plus 2. At this point I probably could. I've got plus 2 here and plus 2 here so those actually cancel and become 0. Now I need to multiply out this bracket. That becomes 2x squared minus 2x sorry not minus 2x minus 4x 2 times positive 1 is plus 2 and I might as well bring over this x while I'm at it, minus x equals 0. Because I do need to put this into a form, left side equals 0, or 0 equals right side. So I end up with 2x squared, negative 4x minus x is minus 5x, and then I've got plus 2 overall, plus 2, equals 0. So now I'm going to ask myself, should I factor this? Should I do completing the square to solve this? Do I need to use the general quadratic formula? Now in this case, let's just ask ourselves the question about factoring. What is the sum? Negative 5. What is the product? 2 times 2 is 4. So I need two numbers that multiply to give me 4 and add to give me negative 5. They both have to be negative numbers. And it looks like negative 1 times negative 4 will work. So I rewrite this using decomposition. So I've split negative 5x into negative x minus 4x. I'm going to factor by grouping. So I get from this one I take out an x and I get 2x minus 1 minus and then from this one I just take out the negative sign and a common factor of 2 and that gives me 2x minus 1 left over. I notice that 2x minus 1 and 2x minus 1 are the same factors so I can factor those out leaving me with factored form. From this factored form I get that 2x minus 1 must be equal to 0 or x is equal to a half and from this factor I get x equal to 2. So now I have found my x values where these are going to intersect. And if I go back and look at my graph, x equals a half, that's between these two points, that makes sense. And x equals 2, it's somewhere out here to the right, not too far. So it seems like the answer that I've come up with so far is quite reasonable. So now I can take these and I can sub these into either of the equations that I started with. I'm going to sub them into, so I'm going to sub my x into y equals x plus 2. Because this is a much easier equation than the quadratic equation. You could sub into the quadratic equation and you should get the exact same result. So when x is equal to a half, y is equal to 1 half plus 2, which is 1 half plus 4 halves which is 5 halves, and when x is equal to 2, y is equal to uh, 2 plus 2, which is equal to 4. And so therefore, my points of intersection are, what are those two points? One of those points is an x-coordinate of 1 half and a y-coordinate of 5 halves. 
and the other one is an x coordinate of 2 with a y coordinate of 4. And it's always a good idea, make sure you check that you're actually answering the question. Find the points of intersection if there are any, turns out there were two, between here. So here is a computer generated rendition of the same graph. There's the parabola and here's the straight line. We're trying to find these two points of intersection. Sorry, my pen gets pretty wonky when the graphics are uh, too large on the screen, but we work through it. So th we're looking for those two points of intersection. The way we did it, we found first the x-coordinates of those points of intersection. I've drawn those as dotted lines down to the x-axis to show you that. And there's another way to look at this, which is, let me just bring this up a little bit, make it visible. We started off setting the parabola equal to the straight line, but then we rearranged so that all we had left on the right side was zero. So essentially what we did is we brought this x plus 2 over to the left side, which looks like this. And if we expand this out and simplify, we ended up with 2x squared minus 5x plus 2. That's what we actually solved. Another way of looking at this solution is take the parabola 2x squared minus 5x plus 2, which is this purple parabola, and find the zeros of this purple parabola. And, not surprisingly, they occur at the exact same x values. To find the y values of the points of intersection, you still have to sub back in and go back to one of the original two equations. If you sub your y values into this purple parabola, you're just going to get zeros again, and that's not helpful to us. All right, this is a slightly different version uh, of this question. We're not looking for the points of intersection. This one's actually giving us, it's giving us the equation of a parabola. It doesn't really look like a parabola that we're used to but it is in factored form, so this is a parabola, and it wants to determine the equations of the lines that have a slope of 2 that intersect. So let's start with that. That's very important that you understand this part, a slope of 2. So what is the equation of a straight line? That's y equals mx plus, and I'm going to keep using the mx plus k. mx plus b would be fine here. Um, but this is my y-intercept, and of course this is my slope. This question specifies a slope of 2, so it's actually 2x plus k. And this goes all the way back to my original screen in the note. So I'm just going to jump back there for a moment. Which is here and I jump past it here. The idea that depending on where the y-intercept is, I'm going to have no solution. If the y-intercept is low enough in this case, then I don't touch the parabola. Once I move the y-intercept up a little bit further, now I'm touching it at one place, and if I keep moving it up, and you can see, if I kept moving it up from here, I would continue to have two solutions. If I moved it down from here, I would continue to have no solution, but there's only one value for the y-intercept that will give me one solution. And we're going to make use of that particular idea. So let's just go back to where we were, which is here. Okay, so we are interested in, first of all, the key that we want to start with is the idea of one solution. Okay? because that there is only one value of k gives one solution. There are actually infinite values of k that will give two solutions. There are infinite values of k that give no solutions. So only one value of k is going to give one solution. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with um, 
first of all, we want the parabola equal to the straight line. We're going to start off the same way we did before, so that means I'm going to need to expand this bracket, 6x, x times negative x is actually minus x squared. I'm going to rearrange everything in this case to the actually you know what I'm going to rearrange everything to the right side just because I'd rather take this negative x squared and turn it into a positive x squared. So negative x squared comes over here to a positive x squared. 2x minus 6x becomes minus 4x and then we just leave that alone as plus k. But now this is 0. And don't let the whole left side right side thing mess you up. This is still a quadratic equation and this is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c and now hopefully you can see why I chose to write the y-intercept as a k value because the general quadratic equation makes use of this parameter b so I didn't want to confuse those things. I didn't have to want to label B1 as B1 and the other one as B2, etc. So having done this, I have this in a form that I can use the quadratic equation. You might, well, hold on, you said check factoring, check completing the square. But in this case, what am I interested in? I'm actually interested in the number of solutions. And the general quadratic formula is great for figuring out the number of solutions. For one solution, What do we know about the quadratic formula? Well, we know that there's a special piece of the quadratic formula, which is the discriminant. For one solution, the discriminant is equal to 0. But what is the discriminant? It's b squared minus 4ac. So that has to be equal to 0. What is b squared in this case? The b value is negative 4. So that's going to be negative 4 all squared minus 4 times a, that's the coefficient of the x squared, that's just equal to 1, times c, which is the constant, which in this case is positive k, and that has to be equal to 0. Negative 4 all squared is actually 16, minus 4k equals 0, 16 equals positive 4k. If I kick the 4k or the negative 4k to the other side, it becomes positive 4k. And I divide both sides by 4. I end up with k equals 4. So this is the y-intercept for this linear equation that gives us a tangent line, gives us exactly one solution. Now, from there, I can test I can test values of k greater than 4 and values of k less than 4 to tell me where do I get no solution? Where do I get uh, two solutions? So what I'm going to do, when I say test k greater than 4, d is equal to, now we already had this, I just want to bring you back to this line d equals 0, this equals 0, this equals 0, this equals 0. That means that this piece is still d. So d was actually 16 minus 4k. Before we solved for it, d was 16 minus 4k. So I'm going to put in a value of d bigger than 4. Well, what's a, an easy value of d that's bigger than 4? How about 5? And so I end up with 16 minus 20, which is negative 5. So what kind of statement could we say about the discriminant in this case? We could say the discriminant is less than 0, which means how many solutions? That's no solutions. But we have to check this one anyway. It might be easy to assume, well, this one's going to be two solutions, but we have to be mathematically correct here. So 16 minus 4k, 16 minus, and now we'll put in a value that's less than 4. So how about 3? Sorry, I missed the coefficient in front there. It's 4 times 3. That's 16 minus 12. 
which is 4. And so yes, our suspicions turn out to be true, but we still have to check it. So D is greater than 0, which means we have two solutions. And let's take a look at what the question wanted to know. Determine the equations of the lines that have a slope of 2 that intersect this once, twice, or never. So now to actually finish this question, our solution, or our answers is, or our answers are, for once, that is the line y equals, and it was the k value of 4, so that's going to be 2x plus 4. The answer to b is y equals 2x plus k, and what was b? Was b twice? b was twice, so which one of these that was for k less than 4, so we just write that here. It's all of these, I wrote 2k there, it's 2x plus k, where k is any number less than 4, and my answer to c is y equals 2x plus k for any value of k greater than 4. This is quite new, and this is something that I'm sure some of you are going to need to take some time to get used to. And I believe that is it for this lesson. I have an associated worksheet, nothing out of the textbook for this one, so look to the web page for that worksheet.